How's it going, everyone? It's Hoggy from Mars from Top Thousand. Today is January 28, 2021. And today, we're, of course, going to talk about the major Northeast and potential Midwest snowstorm that could happen next week. And we'll also talk about the how much snow you could receive in certain areas in the Midwest and Northeast. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more about the daily content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more about the daily content. So let's begin by first taking a look at the GFS model. And you see that the GFS model is taking a relatively strong storm just off the Northeast coast at 995 millibars with this with its snow extending all the way to the Ohio River Valley and throughout the Northeast where they're experiencing heavier snowfall rates than usual. And you see there's a big dip in the jet stream. So that's allowing a lot of unstable air to entrain the storm and really create that convection and really strengthen it and maintain its strength just off the East Coast. And I noticed that the, both the GFS and the European model are a lot more certain with their com with their forecasts today than they were yesterday because yesterday the European model was leaning on bringing more so to I would say Virginia and North Carolina further southward than GFS. However, now the European is now leaning more towards the Europe to the GFS models forecast to the point where there's a lot more confidence that there's going to be more of a snowfall threat in the northeast and there's more confidence now that there's going to be a uh, potentially major snowfall uh snowfall accumulation threat in in and around the i-95 corridor however i will i will still say there's still a lot of uncertainty when we're talking about storm five days out as there's still a lot that needs a there's still a lot of factors that the computer models need to keep in mind over the next several days and i want to advise that do not take these forecasts um over beyond five days out as truth just yet as there was still a lot of uncertainty but let's begin by first taking a look at the gfs model so the gfs mod so this storm will originate just off the coast of california and oregon where there's going to be a chop moving through the west coast and this will also bring a lot of rain and heavy snow in the higher elevations of california so watch out if you're right along the lake tahoe area i would say and there's a lot of flat and there could be the threat of flash flooding in some areas in california so watch out but the good news is that southwest california could receive a little bit more um much needed rain from this storm Fortunately, which will definitely help the the small drought that you guys are receiving in Southwest California, which is good news. However, this storm will continue to move further and further to the east, where the precipitation is on, on the back side of it for the most part. However, there's this low pressure you see just ahead of this precipitation will eventually develop very rapidly once it hits the Midwest, where we're gonna see that very warm Gulf of Mexico air encounter the very cold arctic air that's going to be behind this storm and the and that'll create an unstable environment right around the midwest to really develop this storm and really get its convection going to create a broad area of precipitation and snowfall throughout the midwest so you see 66 hours from now this strengthens into 996 millibar storm with this snow just to the north of this swath of rain and the european model agrees with this forecast if we take a look at the european models um if we take a look at the forecasted radar of the european model you see that the european model is pretty much bringing that low pressure right around the same vicinity as gfs where and while the european model is a little bit more southward with this low pressure system the differences are very minuscule for the most part and both and there's pretty much high confidence that we're going to see this uh an area of rain pretty pretty much around this large and the low pressure around this vicinity and at around this strength where both the european model and the gfs model are taking a 996 millibar storm 66 hours from now right around the midwest which will definitely increase the confidence with this forecast and i would say we're pretty confident that this low pressure system will dump a large amount of rain throughout the midwest because of how broad it is however while you don't see the snow right now it will definitely increase as we head 12 hours ahead where that snow swath increases dramatically and the storm widens dramatically as well and it's as a result of the cold air that's been pretty much located in the northeast throughout the past several days by the time this storm reaches the midwest where 
temperatures in the northeast are going to be 10 to 20 degrees below average over the next several days so that will definitely contribute to not only changing a lot of that rain that's formed over into snow but it'll contribute by creating a little bit more convection on the northern side of this storm for this storm to continue to maintain its strength since it's gonna since there's gonna be a lot of warm gulf of mexico water um air being forced up by this cold dense air just to the north of it and that will create a lot more convection and really widen the area of precipitation as the storm heads into the great lakes region and as a result of this as a result of this widening in the trough you see that the snow band is very is very large and this is going to create a long duration event for a lot of the great lake cities like chicago where you could experience over six inches of snow and this extends to cleveland ohio detroit green bay and along wisconsin des moines could get impacted by some snow from this and it's going to be interesting to see where exactly the snow pressure system moves however there is high confidence it will move right around this vicinity but even but even any small differences of forecast we have to keep in mind could make a big difference in how much snow you'll experience in the midwest because if it moves just a little bit more south or just a little bit more north then you could be talking about difference between potentially uh up to 10 inches or so to no snow at all depending on where that rain snow line is headed into this saturday so um, headed to Saturday into Sunday, so we just have a wait and see where um where that rain snow line will meet up. However, there is high confidence that for the most part, the low pressure and the rain and snow swath should look like this, and the and the um the rain snow line should be right around this area, just north of the Ohio River Valley. However, just south of the Chicago region, so Chicago. This might so Chicago. It's becoming increasingly more likely that this is going to be an all snow event for you guys, and you you could experience over potentially up to ten inches of snow from this. And this extends to Cleveland, Ohio, as well, and Columbus, and a lot Indianapolis. This is going to be a close one for you guys, depending on where that rain snow line meets up. So just stay tuned for your local forecast. However, it seems likely that Indianapolis and Columbus, even despite being a little bit more south. You guys will experience at least some snow from this, especially initially when low pressure is still going to be very far from your from those cities to really um, to really allow to really prevent that heat from coming in initially. So for the most so you will experience at least some snow from this in Columbus and Indianapolis. And then you see that going the uncertainty really begins, I would say, just past the four day mark, because when, once we hit that four day mark, this initial low pressure system that was bringing heavy snow throughout the Midwest will eventually weaken and it, and this low pressure system will eventually jump into a new low pressure system that's expected to form, um, based off of what the, the European and GFS model models are saying just off the east coast and where exactly that low pressure system forms and where exactly it moves remains to be seen and remains a big question mark when it comes to the when it comes to the snowfall threat for the northeast because where it forms and how close it is a coast or and how far will make a huge difference in what type of forecast you'll see however i will say with with more confidence that the confidence is now higher that there's going to be some sort of snowstorm in the northeast and potentially major since both the european and the gfs model are now fairly similar in terms of how much snow they're bringing along the east coast i would say right just northwest of the i-95 corridor where they're both taking a low pressure that's going to meander just off the east coast and it's going to move very slowly and it's going to dump a lot of snow over a large area in the northeast which could make it a potentially major snowfall threat so let's compare the europeans forecast model 120 hours to now the gfs and you're going to see the the similarities between these two computer models which is giving a little bit more confidence that there's going to be a major snowstorm in the northeast however it's still uncertain because again guys five days out a lot could change 
when we're talking about a storm that's five days out you see that five days out you see the low pressure system is right around delmar peninsula at 996 millibars but i was bringing a heavy amount of snow throughout pennsylvania new jersey and southern new england and the gfs model is agreeing with this to a certain extent however the low pressure is a little bit more offshore and we're seeing a little bit more snow in new england and it, this extends uh new jersey and pennsylvania as well however what's interesting is that there's a little bit of rain in training on the on southern new jersey and delmar peninsula which could limit the snowfall for you guys right along the coast depending on where that low pressure system forms because and i noticed that the european model is more leaning on bringing the slow pressure to some closer coast which could limit the snowfall i would say right around new york city and philadelphia depending on how close or how far that low pressure system moves along the coast and it really all depends on this canadian ridge that's going to be to the north and west of it where if this canadian ridge is a little bit stronger then it's going to force this storm to take that turn northward a little bit earlier and it'll meander closer to the coast limiting the snowfall right around the i-95 corridor and and bringing more snow to the interior northeast however if that ridge in right around um eastern canada is a little bit weaker like the gfs model is saying let me show you guys that map right now where uh, 120 hours from now the the gfs model is leaning on bringing a weaker ridge a uh, weaker blocking canadian ridge just to the north of it so if we move forward to 120 hours from now you see that the ridge is just the north of this low pressure system and it's blocking this low pressure system making it meander over the same area in the northeast making it move very slowly However, compared to the European model, where you see the darker greens, which represent a higher geopotential height, where you find 500 millibars, and which represents a very, um, higher pressure, you see that since there's a higher pressure just to the north of it and a stronger ridge, that pretty much means that there's going to be more of a north. Um, it's going to be more of a coastal threat if this were if the European model was correct which would bring more snow to the interior northeast but a little bit less along the coast but the gfs is bringing a little bit of a weaker ridge and a little bit of a weaker blocking to keep that low pressure more offshore and bring much more and bring potentially more snow along the coast however i will say that despite the differences in the forecast and despite the european being a little bit closer to the coast as a result of this blocking ridge and this negatively tilted jet stream that's diverting the winds further um that's diverting the winds from east from westerly to easterly to more of a southerly to northerly direction there's both the computer models are still leaning on bringing a very strong snowstorm along the coast and potentially major at this point so i want to say it's becoming more likely but we're still five days out i want to emphasize that there's still a lot of uncertainty with this storm and it could easily change with any small differences depending on where the slow pressure system forms and how close it is to the coast how far it is and how this blocking ridge um develops because if this blocking ridge is doesn't develop as and as much as anticipated then this storm is expected to move faster and dump a little bit less so throughout the northeast and um, however if it's stronger then we could see a much more long duration event and potentially a major snowstorm right along the northeast and there's going to be plenty of instability and cold air for this storm to work with but we also need to keep in track of how close the low pressure system will be along the coast so the point is there's a lot of factors with it but it seems it's seeming more and more likely we're going to see more of a major snowstorm right around the northeast as i'd say it's very difficult for me to see a scenario where we won't see at least some sort of major snowstorm right around the northeast anywhere around northeast the question remains of where how much snow exactly and um and how and the speed of this storm exactly so we just have to wait and see how this ridge builds because that'll be a huge determinant of where exactly the storm goes and how fast it moves and how much snow overall it dumps over the northeast so we just have to wait and see but let's say the gfs model were correct with its snowfall forecast so let's take a look at its the gfs's current snowfall forecast extending six days from now so 
Um, there's still, keep in mind, there's still a lot of uncertainty. I want to keep emphasizing that because a lot could change um, when we're talking about a storm five days from now. So you see that GFS is bringing a broad area of over five inches of snow and a lot a large area i would say of six to ten inches and then we even see a foot in some areas right around new york city right at the heart of new york the new york city metropolitan area and this extends to upstate new york and i wouldn't be surprised if the gfs model continues to adjust its forecast to bring more people under a foot of snow however i would the european despite being a little bit closer to the coast and leaning towards being more rain along the coast such as delmark peninsula and southern new jersey it's bringing even an even more dire snowfall forecast for a lot of the east coast where of over a foot of snow is expected well over a foot of snow i'll say is expected for a lot of northeast in the european models scenario where um over a foot of snow is expected all throughout the northeast where if we um if we hover over this area um it does seem to be loading but this but you see a large area of 20 inches close to a foot two feet in some areas in pennsylvania and in New York City metro area, also around a foot of snow. So the European is a lot more lenient on bringing a massive snowstorm and potentially record-breaking snowstorm because it's going to move very slowly. There's going to be a lot of un unstable air in this area, which could rapidly intensify the storm. And it it'll just be a recipe for disaster if the European model was correct the gfs is bringing a little bit less snow however it's still considered a major snowfall threat and while when both the and while both the computer models are agreeing that there's going to be at least some sort of major snow storm threat throughout the midwest and northeast i just want to keep in mind five days out we're still uncertain but it's becoming increasingly likely we're going to see at least some sort of major snowstorm in the united states and I'd say just keep a close eye on this one. And even if it doesn't end up being major, I still think we're going to see at least some sort of snow in the Northeast. So keep a close eye on this. If I were to show you guys my current snowfall forecast based off of both the European and the computer models forecast, take this with a grain of salt. Like I said, um, this forecast, like I said, in the bottom right, I said the forecast is definitely subject to change. You see that there's a very large area of I would say um, 8 to 12 along the coast this extends to New York City um, Scranton Pennsylvania and even Philadelphia or just northwest of Philadelphia and southern New England where a large area of 8 to 12 I'm forecasting and it's subject to change this could easily be wrong we're five days out I'll keep emphasizing that um, four to eight inches of snow um, is expected, I would expect right around the Midwest and this extends to Chicago, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, where you guys still will experience a pretty significant snow event, even though it might not be as large or as potent as a Northeast snowstorm. And then two to four inches just to the West and South of this storm. And also the North where you won't experience as much snow. And then one to two just South of it for the most part, but this subject to change um, but this is my the rough estimate I would say for now and I want to emphasize that this is just for now and it could change but yeah just keep a close eye on this in the northeast and the midwest because this could potentially be very very major but anyways guys I thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related calls make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related calls and I hope you guys have a good day.